Hello and welcome to Relatable Judaism Podcast at Each Lit Los Angeles. This is Rabbi Jack Malul. Wherever you are, wherever you're going, doing, driving, there is nothing better than listening to something meaningful that Judaism has to offer that is relatable and will leave us lit on life. The topic for today will be on dating. I will start off with a recap to our introduction to dating and then move on to talking about second dates, why people can't commit, and ghosting. I really hope you enjoy the interactions involved in this podcast. Okay. You went away. Okay, so what we're going to do is with this. I'm going to do a quick recap of a quick recap of what we did last week because it's really important to help us for discussion of this week. Because it's really a premise. Everything's a build up. So the first thing we said is why do we get married in the first place? And you'll see why this is an important question for dating. Okay, some people might say, well, I'm not getting married. This is actually part of it. So the question, the first question we discussed was, why do we get married in the first place? And some people said, so that our children can work for us. <laughs> no. Child labor. Child labor. That wasn't a good answer. He's not here now, so. The, the, answer, the answer that we basically came up with is two things. Number one, it's a mitzvah, it's a value in society. Every society, in order to be healthy, in order to build a family in that area especially, they need to, a child needs a father and mother. They need a relationship with their parents and a solid relationship with their parents. If we don't have marriage and we just had everything else without marriage, so a child doesn't really have a father doesn't really have a mother. It's just like, whatever, they got together and they had me. It's not the same as a real strong bondage that the child has with that parent. And that's it's extremely, extremely important for society because in order to pass morals, in order to pass values to our children, we need them in a healthy environment. We can't do that in an unhealthy environment or an environment where there isn't a home base for that child. You literally create a bulletproof vest for your child in an environment that you do that. So the very first thing we said was marriage is a mitzvah. And the mitzvah is that you're bringing, a, you're, you're making the world a more habitable place by doing it. Okay, that's the very first thing we said. And the second thing we said about marriage is elevation. What does that mean? We are here to become better people. In fact, not just marriage, but all of the mitzvot that we do, all the commandments that we do, all Judaism in general, Shabbat, everything we do, is to make us a better person. That is our goal. So how does marriage make us a better person? Right, what did we say? Challenges Remember? you. What? It challenges it you. It challenges you. Okay, that's the essence of marriage. Very important concept, because many people go into marriage and they think, okay, it's all going to be this love. It's going to be this Disney movie. Right? I'm going to fall asleep and someone's going to, the prince is going to come and kiss me and I'm going to wake up and everything's going to be fine. But it's really not like that. Okay? Really, the Jewish, the Jewish approach is that I'm going into this bondage with the idea that I'm actually going to have a very challenging time. And that's actually there to make me grow. Okay? So when you, have, when you are alone, no one tells you what to do. But suddenly when you're facing someone, you're living with them, then you can't leave your socks laying around, Jonathan. And <laughs> on, I'm just saying, you know, there's things that can, the way you eat, the way you talk, everything is being watched by somebody. And as you do that, you grow. That's why it says in the Torah, it's an Ezer Kenegdo. She's going to be a help for you, but by being against you. This is literally what the Torah says. They will help you, your spouse will help you, but will also be against you. So that is the essence of marriage elevation, just like everything else, it elevates you, makes you a better person. Okay? So these are the two ideas behind marriage. Then we said dating fundamentals. What is the fundamental ideas that you need when you are dating? And the first thing we said is, we spoke about the concept of dating just for the sakes of dating versus dating for the sakes of marriage. And what the difference is. Dating is not a goal in itself. It's not the end. Dating is a way to get into something greater. Okay, now we know each other well, but who are you to tell me what to do? Who are you to feel that connected to me? If I want, we're not, we're not married. 
If I want, I can walk away at any point. So the bondage is never at its highest state. And we always want to take on, if you love someone, you want to take it to the highest level possible. You don't want to just have a mediocre love. You want to take it to the highest level possible, right? So you want it to be on the highest type of bondage that you can get. So that is the next stage, which is marriage. Dating is not a goal in itself. And some people today date for 10 years, 15 years, because at the end of the day, it's, they think that the date in itself is a goal. But it's not. It's a means to something great. Okay, so we spoke about that, and that actually helps us. When somebody dates with the mindset that this is not the actual goal, and I'm trying to get to something greater, it helps us. It helps us think properly. It helps us ask, right? I'll ask you. If you're dating someone just for the sake of having fun, which is fine, you know, but there's other things as well. We all want to have fun. We, that's the only reason why we're dragged to it. In the first place, everyone wants to have fun. But if it's just fun with the dating, and that's as far as it goes, right? You have somebody who's dating just for dating, or somebody who's dating for marriage. Which one would you think? What kind of questions are being asked in each date, right? The one who's dating just to date, what kind of questions is he thinking of? Or she thinking of? What you doing? What kind of food you like? What TV shows are you watching? You know, where do you live currently? How much free time do you have, right? These are the basic questions. What if you're dating for marriage? Now what are you thinking? How many kids do you want? Yeah. Do this... you want to... I mean, not on the first date. No, no, second date. You, you know, like... Start the the, the, uh, put it this way. Somebody who's dating when they're in college versus somebody who's dating when they're already 35 and they really feel like they need to get settled. What kind of dating is that? What difference do you think it'll be? Right? Worlds apart. Why? Because one has much more of a, a, a bigger goal in mind than somebody who's in, in high school and is running around just finding out about the whole thing. Right? It's a different story. Okay, so that's really the, the idea. So you have to have a correct mindset. The first was we have to understand this is very important. We never date just to date. There's a higher goal in end at the end of the day. And there is an end. This is not the goal. Okay, so uh, we also said dating for marriage means the correct questions are asked. There is an end to the dating process and there is a greater commitment in mind. I just said all those things. Okay, then we said meeting in person. Uh, this is actually when you meet. And we spoke about what type of meetings that we do and how technology today kind of makes us meet less in, in person. Even when we are meeting in person, so much of it is in a movie where we don't actually look at each other so much or it's in a loud environment where I'm half drunk, and, right? So kind of different. I don't really get to know you properly. The real way to really know someone, if you're dating, not to date, if you're dating with a high goal in mind, the real way to get to know someone is face to face, straight up, without any other substances to help you, without any, without too much noise to help you, but real communication, finally. I really want to know who you are. I don't want to know who you are just by a, by a Facebook profile, but I really want to look at you for who you are. You may discover a whole different world. And by the way, profile pics, they look way greater than the way you look in reality, right? Isn't that true? <laughs> Isn't that true? I look so thin in all my profile pictures. <laughs> then you suddenly see me and you're like, whoa, I didn't expect that. <laughs> okay. So, meeting in person is really important. The more real the interaction is, the better. The best way to find a good date is through yeah, yeah. a friend. Right? <laughs> Jay Smite. Uh, <laughs> you got about Tinder? <laughs> right, so, but the, what's the best way? We said the best way to meet somebody is through a friend. We said that that's really important because... They have commonalities with you, and they know somebody that's thinking of you, okay? Now, I'm not saying that dating through some appropriate dating site is not good. I think there's actually many very religious families that go online and they use online platforms, even in the very religious community, to look on online platforms for a spouse. That's very normal. It's okay. But at the end of the day, the best option would be is somebody who's close to you suggesting something like a friend. 
And that's why, by the way, it's really, really important to end off a date in a very good fashion. Even if it doesn't work out, we spoke about how ending off should be in a healthy fashion. Because somebody who dated you knows you very well. And maybe they have someone in mind. Excuse me. Maybe they have someone in mind. Maybe they're thinking, they know you the best. So you better, lift, you better leave off with respect and in a good note, because they may suggest you it's happened many times. Okay, we spoke about that too. Uh, we said that you can actually date an old school friend. There was a bit of a joke about that, but at the end of the day, we came to the conclusion, well, I came to the conclusion, that you can date an old school friend. I didn't really ask you. But if you can date an old school friend. That's possible. It's okay. Oh, well, we know each other. No way. We, not for me. I knew her since preschool. Yeah, but it's okay. Now you know each other differently. Actually, there's much more of a chance that there's so much commonalities that it could actually be more likely that you'll fit each other. Okay, so, um, what was that? Number three. The first date is important, but not that important. We spoke about this. Right, we, we tend to be very critical because we want things to work, especially if we're attracted to someone. So we tend to think everything out too much. What did I say? Did I say OMG instead of oh my gosh? Or LOL instead of laugh out loud? Like, why did I say that? I'm just joking. Right, no one does that. But, <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Why did I not punctuate well enough? Why didn't they just laugh out loud? So why don't I just laugh out loud? Is that just like call her and be like, ha ha? <laughs> or whatever, right? So the best way uh, in a relationship is uh, to understand that the first date is important, but it's not that important. The only thing that is important is that first impressions last much longer than second impression. Or third. By the way, th quick question. I was always wondering. I always think this thing. I don't know what you may think. Just a question. <laughs> no, I'm just wondering. Right, does anyone have a problem with so what should I wear yeah. for my date? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's first impressions are important. What do you think? Can you ever dress too high? Can you yeah. ever dress yeah. too high? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Let's say a guy goes out with somebody and it's in a box and he's wearing a suit. Can it be bad? Do you think that's bad? No. I believe, I'm a big believer, you can never dress too high, you can only dress down. Yeah. Depends where you go to a baseball I'm a big believer. If you're going on a date to the bowling alley, go, go. If you're going on first date at a bowling alley, it depends on how you cut it. You're going to bend over and then you're going to rip open. You're going to be a suit jacket. Don't talk to me about it. Yes. No, I know. Okay, let's say there wasn't a discussion and you weren't sure. Probably it's best to stick it out. Right? <laughs> no, but like, if, if let's say the guy is taking her, if the guy is taking her out, let's say to a. To a sort of an ice skating ring, you should tell her, like, you know, we're planning, I'm planning on taking you somewhere. You should dress casual. It would help. No? Wouldn't it help you yeah. if the guy tells you? Yeah. Right. So that, that's probably a considerate thing to do. Yeah. But I do but believe that, do I do believe if there's an unknown idea over here, it's better to dress up than dress down. Because you can always feel bad if you dress underdressed. But you can't feel too bad if you're overdressed. I'm a big believer of that. Some people might argue. Also, also around that. I think you just lean on the side of like two nice versus two little. Like don't go the way you see. Don't agree. Okay. Like if it's like between this and this. You hear what Dan said? He said maybe lean a bit more to the nicer side. You know, dress it up a bit more, but not too much. Also, okay. if, if you're not sure, like maybe, you know, the place might be fancier than you expect or something. I mean, if you're wearing a suit, you can always take off the jacket oh, and the tie. You can't miraculously make a tie and jacket. Well, what about on the girl's side? You can always tell. Yeah, the dress is Yeah, the dress Like maybe you can look smart. Yeah. <laughs> 
really like this one. Bottom line, the journey has to be like, for me, I'm perpetually overdressed, and I like it when I get We're also overdressed. Have you ever been in the... Okay, you're saying it depends on each person, but... That's what I like, but there are people who, they just want to be more casual, that's who they are. Have you ever been to... Right. They're not going to get married. True. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, not for a first question. Yeah. I definitely believe. I think wear what makes people comfortable. Dress like the best version of yourself. Like, nice version of you. Best version of yourself. Yeah, comfortable. Dress like a Yeah, it's just like. I like that. Dress the best version of you, but don't be not you. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Right. Yeah. 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 So like, don't go to the yeah. 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 Okay, we stood on the introduction. We didn't get to ghosting it. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Are you ready? So we spoke about the chauffeur guide to dating right. These are obvious ideas, but they're important. Number one is speak clearly. Chauffeur means change, so we said this idea. Uh, number two is hear. Don't try and always be the solution or the solver. Actually listen to what they're trying to say, because that's what people want. They want you to just hear them. Uh, number three is outline your future to yourself. Not necessarily to them, but to yourself. Outline your future of what you want and how long you want this dating process to go for. Okay? Feelings are important. We spoke about the goldfish the goldfish dies, and you're like, oh, 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 very funny. But it could be. <laughs> Do you remember? Like, emphasize this online. Empathize. That's happened to me. That's happened to me. Definitely happened to me. So, I mean, as a rabbi, meeting people and people open up. Michael, for sure. yeah. oh, right. I don't know. Like, when I met someone, the and they told me, yeah. they started opening up, and they told me how my goldfish died. Rabbi. Right? So I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay, it's fine. It's true. <laughs> Whose phone is that? Okay, last two things we said was always respond. You should always respond. No ghost things, and we'll speak about that. And the last thing we said is respect. Why respect? This is a very important point. We just mentioned, kind of mentioned it. Why is it important to respect somebody that you date, besides for the fact that it's obvious? Leads. Then even if you said <laughs> they have leads. No, no. 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 I don't get it too. Leads is like a sale. Like monetizing Okay, so in that in that word, yeah. nice. It's funny. It's funny. Yeah, we think of sale. <laughs> they, they, even if you do not get on with this person, you really find, you know, they are on your nerves. I cannot. At the end of the day, if you must always maintain that high level of respect, because there may be that they actually need to stop. They may have somebody that they will connect you to. Okay, I don't know. If, I don't know what that really means. So forgive me if it's offending anyone. Okay. <laughs> I wrote some notes on this. It just made him seem like a robot. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to leave you now. Guys and girls, these are the three questions I'm going to leave you to. What do you need to see in another person to consider a second date? So if you are dating with someone, what do you feel like is really important? What values do you think are crucial to say? 
I want this person and I'm happy to date them, okay? Write down three things. I want the girls and the guys to think this together. Or not even write them down, you can come up with it. Girls, guys, can... Wait, there's a few questions here. How should we show interest? This is a very important question. At the end of a first date. So, you finish a date, here's the big question. You finish a date, should you say, oh, that date was amazing, if you don't really like it? No. But then you just, you're just going to say nothing, then the guy's going to think, oh, she's so rude. How can you say that to her face? <laughs> you discuss it, and you're going to talk about it. So you want us to speed up? Yes. And when and how? Last question that I wrote here is... <laughs> One more question. One more question. When and how do we decline the person we are dating? Yes, if you decline, is that the right way? Break up with them. How do you say? Break up with them. How do you break up with them? In your eyes. Let's so let's try to separate the guys. Guys and girls. Guys together. Guys, by the pure and food. Who is going to go first? The guys or the girls? Ladies first. Who should go first? The Ladies guys first. Or the girls? Girls, what do you think? Ladies yeah. first. The sugar The girls. Said, so the ladies said guys first. Okay. <laughs> so I think we're going to start with the guys. Though. Okay, so what we're going to do is one question each. Okay, oh, so okay. One more question each. First, the guys first. She actually asked questions about you instead of talking so it's about equal, herself. In, it's interesting. Like it's not just, it's, it doesn't feel like... It goes two ways, by the way. Right. Like, have you ever been in a conversation like, only one side is asking questions, and like, soon enough, like, the one side just feels like an interrogation? Yeah. Yeah. It's a pretty, you know, it's a pretty good indicator. It's like, this isn't going well. But, if people, both people are asking questions, like, building things up, and the conversation trails to like a, uh, you know, like an un- I don't know, like, I don't know, like, mutual interest. Mutual? Wait, what is mutual and equal? Mutual means, like, interest on both sides. Equal means it has to be literally exactly the same. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All these big guys. Words matter. Do you know what? I wrote like, how? Okay, next. <laughs> okay, girls, what's he come up? Oh, wait, wait, guys, you've got more, right? Oh, yeah, do you want okay. more? Yeah, why have you come okay. up? Um, so, funny enough, like, the interest less so matter when we realize that, like, like, the more important thing is that the values are similar. So that, like, you guys, you know, values can mean an extended sense of, you know, things like, you know, Politics, it could be. Uh, on the first day. No. We didn't say this. Values are more like uh, the things that you hold important to you. Like, Similar interests. Like yeah. So this is different because this is you're both interested in yeah. each other. The second is similar values. Okay, so we'll yeah, similar values. Yeah. Like, like, for instance, similar like values. for me, something that's very important is like that the person also would that life is a blessing. Like, they're not going to be, like, a negative person. Like, you're like, oh, it's raining out. Life sucks. Like, that's the 
We said that too. We're like yeah. positive mindset and goal. Yeah. You know that some people, a lot of these things, mutual or equal interest, you have to all take this into mind. All of these things are sometimes overexpressed because they just want to make conversation. You know that. You have to bear that in mind. Will lead to the second and third. You know, if it does lead us, then you kind of figure it out. And it just needs to be really positive. Okay, let's carry. Okay, so yes, we have to. We have, we have to. Let's go through all of them, and then let's really think out first versus second. Okay, so we said mutual or equal interest, and then we said similar values. Similar values. Where is it? Okay, and then our last answer is um, down to earth. Which kind of ties into like that's too broad. Wait, how... Down to earth. Um, so they're still answering the first question. Yeah, so like it kind of kind of ties into you know like uh, balancing out the compassion versus like your accomplishments. This is humble. You know? yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wouldn't you say mutual equal interest means that they're humble? Uh, if you're like not, they show interest in you. They're humble enough to listen to you? Like, some, some girls are stuck up too, you know? Like, just relax, calm down. <laughs> some guys are stuck up too. No, no, no. We're not going to say the word calm down. We're not going to say the word calm down. That's a new word. Saying chill is not that easy. You You're saying that there's too much nothing. <laughs> Not the same thing? No. Interest is, uh, like, showing interest is like, so first of all, I don't really agree with that one, but to me, I think it means the respect of, like, you know, giving someone the time of day, being there, which shows kindness, because even if you're not interested in them, you should be acting like you are and giving them the time of day and respecting them as a human being. Um, so there's a lot of things in there. There's respect, there's right. hearing them. There's, yeah. So does it all go under humility, maybe? Is that what you were saying? Like you, no, no, no. I'm saying that I think that's what a mutual oh. interest is. Okay. But that's just, I think down to earth is like a personality. Personality is not like a type A personality where they're really aggressive and like you're really argumentative with you. You you would know that. Yeah. That's what Jonathan was basically saying. Chill. I think you can be a type A. You know, you're down to earth. You get to like argue too, but like, you know, like, don't be aggressive towards like the conversation. It's a good yeah. time. Yeah. Don't want to have conversations with a girl because they know it's going to lead to an argument or a fight. So like we back down and that's part of being down to earth is like, you know where I'm coming from. Let's just have a conversation. So I think, and I'm, I'm, I think it's all it. Yeah. If I may, sure. if I may yeah. add it, sure. to put a bow on it, I think it's, I think we're getting a little bit carried around in the specifics, and more so it's like, is one person's crazy matching another person's crazy? Is another person's calm matching another person's calm? Yeah. So, so, I think okay. it's, so what is down to work? That's what I'm trying no, to do. I think it's just everything's good communication. That's what well, down that's, to work is. That's a different one. Maybe it could be that. It's too really broad. It's so too broad. I don't is, it, is, is it an energy type of thing? Being down to earth is an energy. But it's also that's an energy. It's what you bring to the table. Yeah, I have to follow It's true. It's because the energies that they bring to the table. It's compatibility. with someone and they can respect what you're saying you can still have like 
a conversation. So if you disagree on certain things like politics or what you want to do with your life or whatever, that they listen to you, respect what you're saying, and go, I hear you. That's not personally my view. This is what I think. And just having like an open dialogue. How about you can't marry somebody you don't like your political view. That is not a smart idea. I don't think it's not. I was trying to explain the cat. I don't think that's true. I just think like you have to earn it. I don't know, like, I feel like same angle, yeah. just like, no, no two people are having the same place. Right. Right. As long as you're going, as you're that's a very, very important, that's, so should I say, uh, same goal or open to growth? I think it's two separate things. Two yeah. separate things? Yeah. Open to growth is like, you're bettering yourself. Yeah. 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 You're constantly learning. I understand that you were all yeah. together in one, yeah. one unit, right? Not all the girls were together. No, right. Okay. We got like different groups. Okay, so we'll say from each group. We'll see what's next. Do you guys want to go, or should we go? I mean, we have like 20. Unless there's 20 things. Really? Okay, we have write down three, so I wrote down 21. It's okay, you have to be ready. One for everything. Which one are we going to choose? Okay, let's go. Okay. Take two of the best. Take two of the best? Okay, so... This is really hard, but like after a first date, like you can tell what someone is. I like uh, positivity. Yeah, the eight at one guy's negative. Like if they're complaining about their job or something else in their life. Like, yeah, like you're supposed to keep it light. I don't know. You can complain at some points and you can vent when you need to, but not on a first date. Don't like to not on a first date, on a second date. It feels like when you get to yeah, it better. Yeah, then you can start venting, but like don't make it a daily habit. I don't know. Don't make it like. 
happening if there's only negative energy coming towards me? Like, if you're it's very important. It's, 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 it's more like it's how they handle their stress. It means that there's something unhealthy. Yeah. yeah. It can be a very big sign of a lack of health. It could be 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 a lack of health. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, what well, else? Anyone else? I mean, this is the tell you that I clearly mentioned in the question first day the second day okay that means we've only met them once properly okay that doesn't mean so if let's say you're on a first date and someone's talking a bit too much uh, it could it could very well be they're nervous it could very well be that they're not being themselves right now it could be that you had a bad day and you're not feeling the chemistry today. It could be, there's many, many ideas that could be happening. It was only a first day, it was first encounter. Now, I, I think that all these things should be taken into account, but I definitely think that the two things that we really need to, we really need to look for is one is attraction. Okay, I'll speak about this. After a first day, am I attracted to them, period? No. I mean, am I attracted? Are they attracted to me? Actually, according to Judaism, did you know that you are not allowed to marry somebody unless you have physical attraction? See them first. 
According to the Talmud, the Talmud brings this down, the Jewish law, you must, let's say, if you live in uh, America and you want a nice girl from uh, Chechnya, <laughs> you, uh, I don't know, uh, you can't go there because they don't let you in. Um, so, you may say, oh, I'll send a messenger to marry, to marry her to me. I know that she looks beautiful. I think she is perfect for me. Right? And she's young, and I'm 17, and I want a young girl that's 20. Because that's what happens in some... <laughs> right? so, so, let's say, can you send a messenger and say, oh, person wants to marry you, here's the money, this is the agreement, they're going to do it, and she says, yes, I will marry him, right, can they actually do that, according to the Jewish law, no, no, you cannot, you actually. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> that is something which is questionable, but you definitely need to see them properly, you definitely would need to see them properly, it's questionable, but we would definitely push to really seeing someone properly, right, FaceTime is not the same why? Why? Because the first thing you look for is attraction. attraction. Am I attracted to this person? Now, there is such a thing as saying to myself, okay, I had this dream for 30 years, I'm 30 now, I had this dream for 30 years of this princess. She was going to be perfectly, uh, I don't know, blonde. And she's going to be for this kind of hairstyle, and she's going to be a perfect kite, that I, right? So people fantasize and dream, and then all of a sudden, I meet this amazing girl, and she's beautiful to me, but she's not like, whoa. Okay, so that can happen, where somebody is saying to themselves, she's not whoa, or he's not whoa, but he's a great guy, he looks really attractive, he's really attractive, but he's not whoa, he's not the person that I always dreamt of. So in that situation, you have to ask yourself. Okay, there's, let's say, between 0 to 10, 0 to 5 would be, 0 will be repulsive, 5 will be neutral in the between, okay? When I say 5 is neutral, there's maybe something that I don't like, but it's not repulsive, okay? Anything below 5, there's something repulsive about them. Like, ugh. Okay, and then from 5 to 10 will be neutral to attractive. Okay, so 0 to 5, 5 to 10, 5 is neutral, 5 to 10 will be someone who's attractive. If they are attractive to you, but they're not this thing that you thought about, you dreamt about, you slept about for 30 years. So, in that situation, I would definitely think it's okay to continue at least once or twice to see the attraction grows in them. Take out your fantasies and look at that person for what the quality for the attraction that you are attracted to. Take note of what you're really attracted to about them. And over time, if you focus on that attraction, you can actually make or understand that attraction is really valuable to you and it's what you want. That can happen. It's a very important idea that we believe in. But if somebody is in any way repulsive, it's very, and very hard to get out of it. It's almost impossible. If, they, if there's something about their look or their chemistry is really repulsive about them, then they're not for you. Most likely, it's very hard to move that to the 5 to 10 zone, if it's in 0 to 5. Make sense? It's very simple, very obvious, but that's very, very true. So number one, I would say, is attraction. And um, actually, number two, in the first date, remember, you've only met them one time. Number two is kind. Who was that? Being. So kind. Being kind, not just to others, but... Really, there's something selfless about them. Okay, there's something selfless about them. I'll tell you why. Look at this. If they're kind, will they be willing to listen to your side of your story? Yes. If they're kind, will you see something nice about them in their values, something good about their values that you have? Doesn't anyone like kindness? If, you know, if they're kind, wouldn't you have a good communication with them? Right? These open up all the others. So the two things you really want to look for at the first date, because you will not know everything about somebody in one day, even if you do want to, is am I attracted? Can I even have an attraction that will grow? Right? And the second thing is, are they kind? These are the first things that you need to see. 
at least in the first day. After the second day, you can definitely look at all these others. And we're going to be talking about later on as well, writing out a graph of some kind of what you really want, what's important to you, what you must have, what you must not have in your day, and what will be nice to have in your day. Okay, these are three things that you should put down and write them down. We'll talk about them at another point. Must have, must not have, and what would be nice to have. And these are things that you need to think about because they can change. Let's say somebody say they must have a college degree, right? My parents want it. My grandparents want it. This is what I need. You need to be a doctor. So that could be a must-have, a number one of your values that you want. But when you actually meet the person, there's everything else besides for that. And he's actually have, he actually has a great job. But no, he didn't have that college degree that I wanted. Didn't have a PhD. Right, so there's got to be something you'll compromise. So when you write down all the points of the must-haves, you'll actually you notice know, certain things that you can actually take away because you have to compromise at a certain point. But why I think it's really important to these two. Anyway, so well done. You basically got the answer. Kind of fogged it down, and I hope that was helpful. Does that make sense? Does this make sense to everyone? Yeah. Good? Okay, shall we continue? Yes. yes. Okay, so... Why can't people commit? Should we do that or should we go straight to ghosting, communication, and red flags? Wait, no, can we go to commit? Why can't people commit? Okay, so there's two reasons why people can't commit. I wrote them down. Number one is fear of abandonment or fear of rejection. I'm very scared to get close to this person because I cannot face somebody telling me that you are not for me. This is called the fear of abandonment. Fear of rejection. Does that make sense? I'm so scared to get close to this person. I really like them, but I don't want to get any closer because I'm scared they're going to tell me you're not for me. This is how scared people are. That they'd rather not even get into a date because of their fear of rejection. Isn't that crazy? That's something that happens. The second thing that we have is something called the fear of attraction. I'm very afraid of getting too attracted to you because. That way, I'm going to be really uncomfortable. It's very similar, but I'm going to be really uncomfortable in myself. I'm going to be, if I get too addicted and too attracted to you, then I'm also going to fear that rejection. So there's fear of rejection alone, just by in general, but there's also the fear of attraction. Fear of attraction means I'm just scared to get too close to somebody because that attraction in itself will cause me may cause me fear of rejection. So the basic, fundamental idea is I'm fear of rejection. That is why people find it very difficult to commit. Okay, so I'm going out on one day, I'm going out on the second day, third day, I want to have a serious conversation with you, talk to me, but it's not working. Why? Fear of rejection. You're scared that if it gets too close, then it's going to be a situation where you have to walk away, it's not going to work, things haven't worked in the past, there's this problem. Make sense to everyone? Okay, so, why do you think people have the fear of rejection? What kind of, what comes to mind? What would you think is the reason why people have fear? Their pride. They have a certain pride. What? Past, past experiences. Yes. But just like self-worth, honestly. Yeah. Ego, you know, pride. I don't know if this goes more towards the pregnant part, but like vulnerability is, you know, mm-hmm. when it comes to vulnerability as far as confidence. Like they're not sure with themselves, confidence? Well, care for people. I'm yeah, like being, having the fear of like being vulnerable. Like when you're vulnerable, you're, you're opening up to a certain level of faith in the other person, right? But it's like loss of control. Like letting someone else control how you feel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Some people also don't like the fact that they've never been told no before. So like someone's always never been what? told no before. So someone's always used to getting what they want, who they want, and how they want it. And so like a lot of people just they So they're spoiled basically. Like they <laughs> that is that good way I to I mean say. it wouldn't be like spoiled, but like they haven't had to go through the fact that they just, they, their confidence just gets shot down a lot. Very important, because I think that one of the ways 
of being able to commit more, okay, how do we get to commitment, is desensitizing ourselves from the fear of rejection. Okay, so the fear of rejection actually has a lot of applications in many areas, not just in dating, in many areas. Why wouldn't somebody uh, ask for a job? Why wouldn't somebody, uh, you know, ask for a, ra a raise after they've worked for two years? Why wouldn't, t there's many times that we hold ourselves back and a lot of it's to do with that fear of rejection. Mm -hmm. So one of the ways of doing it is desensitizing ourselves. Meaning coming, constantly trying to come out of our comfort zone, make that cold call. You know, call that person, even if you don't feel comfortable, just force yourself. Slowly but surely, over time, you desensitize yourself to that fear of rejection, and it comes easier to face that no from somebody. You, does that make sense? You'll get used to hearing no. And somebody who's not used to hearing no finds it very hard. I just like want to make more kind of like put this out there, um, but like people don't maybe give credit or like maybe put into perspective how it is being to reject her and the feeling that sense of rejection as the rejector, where you know this person isn't right for you and you need to turn them down, but then feeling like once you turn them down, that's it, they're not going to want you. And kind of like I know, at least I speak with a lot of friends that like to keep people on the hook because they don't want to be, they like the. I, the attention, but like that's what it is. You like the attention, and you don't want to reject because then you lose your chance. But it's a big deal. To so you're saying the reason why people stay or hold on to a, a date that they don't think is good for them. Is that what you're saying? Okay, so that's a. Uh, I think that's another discussion of why people actually stay even though they shouldn't be. And you're saying that's also a fear of rejection. Yeah. Validation. Validation. Yeah. Right, or fear of confrontation too. Fear of loneliness. Fear of loneliness. So like not finding somebody else. Right. Okay, so they, but let's go back to why people can't commit. So we said ego, pride, vulnerable. Um, this is why someone can't commit to making a date or to actually going further in the date to take it more seriously. And I think these are very important ideas that we should think about. Okay? Fear of rejection. Like family or, yeah. or friends. Not want to be monogamous. What does that mean? Like you kind of still want to just like have fun. So you don't want it to be. Yeah, you want to see like multiple people. Kind of thing. Like you don't want to commit. You don't want to commit because you just want to have fun, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually very important. Because when you're dating to some, when you're dating someone, you want to be asking. It's an important point. You need to be asking yourself: Is this person going to use me? Are they really not committing because they just want to date to date, or are they just dating me because they want to have fun right now? Are they using me? And that's a very scary thought because the more intimate you get with that person, the more, the more we feel connected, the more rejecting we feel after, the more emotions are lifted. So it's very important to ask yourself if there's no commitment and meaning in the communication. There's no communication. They're very um, reserved and they're holding themselves back from opening up in any way. So maybe they're not, they're just dating to date and they don't want to take it to a high level. You need to think that. Because if they are dating, by the way, dating to date means they will be using you. At some point or other, Dating to date means that that person will be using you. Now, you may not like that, but that's a real reality. And sometimes people actually go on a date, they get into that real committed relationship without, help, without having that emotional bond. They don't have that emotional deeper bond, but they're just connected as bodies, let's say, put it that way. So we actually just, we just get to know each other physically, but we don't actually get a deeper emotional bond. And then things don't work out. Well, honestly, like, whose fault is that? If, if, if you feel like someone's used you after that, whose fault is that? You have to ask it. Why did this happen to me? Well, I wonder. Yeah, this is a question you need to ask yourself. If there was so much of, of a physical connection without an emotional connection with this person, then they just walked off. But why did I do that? I'm not saying 
I'm not saying that there's no way of getting out or growing out of it, but that's a question we need to ask ourselves. Okay. Does anyone have an objection or a thought about that? Yes. It sounds like a lot of these things come down to trust. And then when you're going on a date or dating someone, you're trusting them with their emotion. And, I mean, I know, like, you're going on the first date, so you're trusting that you're going to be in a safe situation, that you're going to be in a situation that is actually going to go well. And then going from the first date to the second date, you're continuing that trust. And are you able to trust someone or um, let them trust in you? Very important, right. Um, the, the way you build trust is by having an emotional connection, not just the physical connection, right? You need right. to build up an emotional connection. Otherwise, who are they? Who They don't even know me. They, they don't know me for who, for who I really am. They just know me for my body, for what I have to offer. They don't know me for me. Right. Okay. Yeah? Sorry, kind of like a little bit of a personal example, but I think it applies. Yes. Um, so, like, my, my boyfriend and I are long distance. He's from uh, the UK. And we met when he was here. And, like, I didn't want to move forward with him initially because I was like, you live on the other side of the world. Like, this is never going to work. And so, for a while, we, like, pretended that we were like, oh, we're just, we're casually talking to each other. And this isn't really going to go anywhere. And now we're actually, like, together. We're a couple and we're, like, doing long distance. But initially, we didn't start out that way because we were like, this is ridiculous. And we're gonna date other people and like be, be casual and be cool, but then we like had that time since we're in different places to talk to each other and like build a connection that way because we weren't able to like physically be in the same place. So we right. just talk like every single day. Wow. And then I realized like, oh wow, I like really like this person. This is someone that I have a deep connection with on a different level. Like we're the same person. Right, and I believe that you should. Like even if you live far apart, if you really like someone, yeah, that's okay like, to pursue it. You can pursue it, even if it's a long distance. Yeah. We need to speak about long distance versus short distance. I spoke, I mentioned that. Maybe another point. But that's a very important discussion. Yeah. It's how like you deal with that. It's like an initial thing in my head. I said, I'm never going to do long distance. And everyone's always like, long distance is impossible. It's so hard. And I felt that way for the longest time. And now I'm the one doing it. Right. So it's kind of like because you're in, you're involved. Like, yeah. You like this person, and they like yeah. you. You know, you can't do now. So we need to really see how we can ha be healthy in the long distance. There's a lot to think about long distance uh, type of dating. Anyway, so uh, should we carry on or not really? Any more time? Ten thirty. Ten thirty. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Okay. Let me just finish. Let me just finish a bit. More. Okay, let's just do ghosting and communication. Okay, this is really important. Now, I never heard of the word ghosting until you guys came along. You <laughs> told me about ghosting last week. You're like, this is a thing. I'm like, what? What's, I'm what's ghosting it? Today, actually. Right. Ghosting is <laughs> now, I was like, what? Is this a thing? No, they have no, right? Is this mutual to everyone? They have no connection with you ever again. They knew you well. They knew you very well, yeah. and suddenly they just disappear off the map. Is this real? Yeah. yeah. You, can be, you can be ghosted and re-ghosted and re-ghosted again. Yeah, because yeah. 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 they keep coming back. Yeah. They come back so, like this. Because, like, they come back and you just go back. Multiple ghosting? Oh, my goodness. Why would you go back? Why would you go back? That's a cute. You did it all to your first day. Yeah. Met with me, learn with me, all of a sudden, boom.
Like, hey, what's up? I just love you, bro. Well, it's not me, it's not me. Next week we'll speak about what happens if a creep comes up to a girl and he's 
like really weird and you and you what do you do? You don't want to break his confidence in his life and make it he's dreaming about you. But maybe not a creep like dangerous guy. Maybe no, 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 Thank you for listening to our podcast. If you like what you hear and are between the ages of 21 and 30, you are a beginner to Judaism living in Los Angeles, then this group discussion is for you. Come and join us at Aishlit every week on Taco Tequila Torah Tuesdays or Wednesday night for Wednesday Wine and Wisdom once a month. This is besides for our exciting social events and Shabbats. Stay tuned for more upcoming podcasts Check us out on Facebook, Aishlit Los Angeles, or go to our website at aishlit.com.